how in the world did a stingray that's in a tank at an aquarium that's been by itself for the last eight years get pregnant? Uh, One thing I can tell you is that the world is an interesting place. And we're going to talk about this story on this episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. Let's start the show. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin. This is the podcast where you find out what's happening with the ocean, how you can speak up for the ocean, and what you can do to live for a better ocean by taking action. And today is going to be an interesting day because one, uh, I had another hockey tournament for my daughter this weekend. Uh, we didn't get to the finals. It was a 16, six team division. And we had to finish in the top two. We finished in the top three. We finished third. We were in second place. It came down to goal differential just like last weekend. And we missed it by two goals. We had the lead too. We were up by like seven goals and we lost five nothing in our last game. And it just kind of destroyed our chances with another team winning six nothing. So if you ever live in the world of hockey and goal differential in uh, in tournaments, it's very difficult. It's so, so hard to take. But we played well. We had a good time. I screamed a lot, cheered a lot. Uh, and, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was really, really fun. I know the girls that we, that I coach had a great time as well. I know my daughter had a fantastic time. So lots of hockey the last month, right? February that's uh, in Canada. That's hockey month, hockey tournament month. Apparently for me, uh, I've got more hockey next weekend. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, but then we get a nice two week break because, uh, my family and I, we are going to Italy for some time. So I'm going to have, don't worry, I'm going to have episodes while I'm gone. They're going to be pre-scheduled. They're going to be batched. Hopefully my voice holds out this week and you'll have uh, episodes three times a week um, for the next three weeks and uh, they'll all be scheduled up for you to listen to. Okay. So feel free to contact me. I'll still be uh, Instagram accessible as well as email accessible. Just won't be answering as quickly as I normally do, but uh, I'm looking forward to this trip. It'll be a great relaxation. It was a tough year last year with losing my father. And so my family and I, we're going, my mother, my brother, and my family, we're going uh, to Italy to enjoy some culture, enjoy some decent weather, and uh, I've never been to the Mediterranean, so that'll be a lot of fun. Well, I have been, but not on the Italy side. I've never been to Italy, so we're going to have a lot of fun there. But anyway, let's get into this episode. This is a really interesting story, and I saw a number of articles come out on this. This one's from the Lad Bible, of all places. I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, it's called Mystery of a Stingray Who Got Pregnant With No Other Mates in Her Tank Has Actually Been Solved. And, and you're just like, wow, it's been solved. How did something get pregnant like that? It feels like a show right off of Maury Povich, if you don't know who Maury Povich is. He was one of those talk show hosts who uh, got famous. They'd have you know weird people on, weird or people with weird situations going on back in the 80s and 90s. And then it got really popular for like, uh, is this, are you the father of this baby or something like that? It, it was kind of depressing in a way, but, uh, made a lot of headlines. So and more, when you talk about Maury Povich, you're like, who's the father of this baby? And that's the question. Who's the father of this round stingray four pups, or that's going to, this stingray is going to have four pups. And it, this is all happened at the aquarium and shark lab in North Carolina. When, uh, researchers there discovered that there was a bit of swelling in, in Charlotte, the stingray. And they wanted to know what was happening. They thought she may have de- developed cancer. And they were like, well, let's let's do some more tests. Uh, let's do an ultrasound and let's see what's happening with this uh, this poor stingray. And then they realized, uh, they after they carried out the ultrasound, they shockingly found out that Charlotte was actually now pregnant with four pups. Uh, now in February 2024, uh, she is not far off from her delivery date. So we're going to see these four pups and we're going to see what they look like. Uh, there's also going to be tests. They're going to do some DNA tests to make sure that it's nothing, nothing of a, a phenomenon where, you know, a stingray got in a tank or it's been a while since the stingray has been in a tank. Cause the mystery is the last stingray that was in a tank was eight years ago. So that last male stingray. So they're like, how in the world does this happen? Um, so at first, the, the wonder was whether one of the male sharks uh, she shared the tank with briefly had managed to impregnate her, but those claims have been ultimately dismissed because it's been such a long time. And they will carry out a DNA test for the pups on the pups uh, following uh, their birth to see if you know they carry the genes of a mystery father, but they expect that they're going to return no new revelations. Um, and this is why. You ready? Are you ready? It's explained um, from a phenomenon known as parthenogenesis. 
And parthenogenesis is basically when the egg fuses with the cell in the mother's body, triggering cell division in that egg. Uh, and it leads to an embryo. So making her children essentially clones of her. So imagine that, you know, and, and you think about like this, this stingray was in a tank on its own in, at an aquarium in North Carolina, you know, just loving life and be like, you know what? There's something triggering me inside, in, triggering inside of me saying, I need to do something, you know, to make sure that my gene my genetics go on to the next generation. Now you have to think back a little bit to what the wild is like. The purpose in the wild is for genes to move from one person or one animal to a number of animals in terms of pups or babies or calves or whatever you want to call them, basically offspring, right? It's, it's, it's like in our, in our nature, you know, even as humans, we feel the need that we need to breed. We need to have offspring. We need to have babies, right? Obviously there's more into it for us. We're more conscious beings. We, you know, we have a lot of development and we want to make sure that our kids are not only survive, but they develop into people who can function in society in one way or another, in the right way, of course, but in, in one way or another. So there's a lot of parenting involved, a lot of rearing involved when you think about it from an animal perspective. But stingrays and sharks alike, as well as other animals in the wild kingdom, they want to make sure that their genes are passed on to the next. They want to make sure it's their genes, the fittest, the strongest will survive. And if you go to genes and biodiversity, why that's so important is because the species needs to survive. And having genetic diversity is extremely important because animals will survive and adapt based on the conditions of the water. And if the conditions of the water give you something, right, like throw something at a species that's the change in the environment, right, all of a sudden, these stingrays are like, we need to adapt. They're not just going to mutate. Some of them do over time. Their genes mutate. But for the most part, the genes, the, the animal with the genes that is best suited for that habitat will continue to survive while the others, if they're not suited for the habitat, will die off. And you lose a little bit of that genetic diversity, that ability for that species to be resilient, right? Resilient to adaptation. The more, the more genetics you have, the more diverse it is, the stronger the species will survive, the more better chance that species will have to survive. So when there's a, something that's get thrown at me, water quality issues, or you know, maybe there's a prey that died off that is really abundant and most stingrays will eat, but then another prey is around that's a little bit harder. You need to have like maybe a different mouth formation or something different. You have to be fast at catching the species, and some of those some of the stingrays from that species is not as fast. Well, the ones that are fast, that have those genes to make them faster, will survive longer and survive this adaptation than other genes, right? Than other species with the, with different set of genes that are not as fast. So that's how the, 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 you know, sort of nature works. It's the strongest will survive, the fittest will survive, and that's evolution. So if you think about it in this situation, this stingray is like, I'm all by myself. I'm getting up there in age. I'm going to have to have some young right? To pass on my genes. There's nobody here to mate with. This sucks, right? You can't do mating because mating is the best for genetic diversity because you're looking at a mate with a specific set of genes. And so like your genetic, your, like your genotype would have to be a specific, like maybe they're, they're, they have, I guess they're, um, what do you call it? Their predisposition to have a specific size, right? That would make it better. Or like I said, maybe mouth shape or something different that would allow it to adapt well to this environment. But if you don't have a species there, you know, you almost have to do like what, what corals do and that's just reproduce asexually, right? So parthenogenesis, parthenogenesis is essentially a, a different way of asexually reproducing. So basically cloning yourself. And it does that by the egg fusing with the mother's body and that triggers cell division and it leads to an embryo making her clones, you know, children clones, her pups clones. So it's going to have the same genetic makeup as the mother. So if they do, if the, if the researchers do the test, it'll probably be the same genes. You know, I'd be very surprised if it'd be different genes, but probably the same genes as the mother because they're exact clones, right? So it's a really interesting scenario we're having here it's making headlines all over the place 
And actually, uh, Katie Lyons, who's a researcher at the Aquarium and Shark Lab, uh, she told the Daily Mail that Charlotte's pregnancy is the only is the only recorded example she knows of for round stingrays, though parthenogenesis has occurred in other sea creatures. So Katie said uh, it was she was quick to squash any suggestion that Charlotte was due to give birth to some shark stingray hybrid, which is what people thought. They thought an actual shark, what our typical sharks would look like, not a flat shark or anything, but a typical shark would look like, would be like a shark hi- would give birth to a shark hybrid. She says, we don't know why it happens, parthenogenesis, just that it's kind of this real neat phenomenon that they seem to have, be able to do. So we should set the record straight that there aren't shark and some shark ray shenanigans happening here. So it's not as if sharks got in the tank and like all of a sudden they started to breathe. Um, that so that so that's out of the out of out of question. So we could probably cross one of those reasons off the off the list. But this is extremely interesting to seeing what is happening here. Right. This goes to show how resilient animals can be, even though they don't get a mix of new genes to put into the gene pool, which would be optimal for a species for the reasons I just mentioned. But, you know, at least that that gene, those set of genes are getting passed on to the next generation. So there's more of an ability to mix those genes up later on. Right. And I think that's the interesting thing. And I should mention, too. When we talk about aquariums and zoos, there are times, there's like a system that aquarium and zoos ensure to ensure that the persistence of genetic diversity moves on. Now, I'm not sure how it works for aquariums, but I definitely know it works for zoos and where, you know, say you have a rhino. And this rhino has really good like a gene pool, right? It's got a good, it'll, it'll really contribute to the genetic diversity of that, say, white rhino population. And so what they'll do is they'll have a database of other white rhinos that have a similar good, that have a similar um, genetic diversity, or that would be good to mix those two genes into one individual. And so they'll look around and they'll match it up. And there are scientists and researchers involved and staff for the, I know the um, zoos and aquarium, the, the Aquarium and Zoos Association of North America have it in a database where all the zoos are connected and aquariums are connected and they can move species from one to another to, for visits so that they can act like they'll visit for one or two years and they will do a, go into a breeding program where there's actually, you know, breeding going on for genetic diversity. So the idea is that if ever this population gets extirpated out in the wild or something happens out in the wild and they're, they have the ability to, um, reintroduce that species into that area or bring in that species into that area to mix with the wild population because it's got the best genetic diversity, then they'll do it. But there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just, oh, we have this white rhino, we have this other white rhino, they're going to hit it off, they're going to have a good genetic diversity for their young, and then we can put them back into you know the habitat in the wild. That's not always the case. Right? It all depends on the individual animal. Animal, it depends on the species. It depends also on the condition of the wild of where these species normally range. Right? If you if you if rhinos are getting poached and we know that rhino is not safe to put into the wild, we're not gonna they're not gonna put in a, a rhino in that area. It's the same thing when you look about repopulation of ocean animals. If there's an ocean animal that's at risk from being killed. They're not going to put it in right away. They're going to try and protect that area as much as possible, observe that area, and then if it's the right fit down the road, they'll reintroduce that ocean animal. This is happening not just in, in zoos. It's happening everywhere, and I think that's really uh, it's really great to see, and there's a lot of science that goes into it and a lot of policy and management that goes into it, and people who are a part of that are just fantastic people that do really great things. Um, it's something that I got to learn on by being the host of the Toronto Zoo podcast, the Hidden the Hidden Zoo, and um, I just thought you know that was something to be really, that was really cool when they start looking at why it's so important for these animals to breed when there's a breeding program. You know, there's like a species plan that they have, and that, that species plan is really important to the the survival of that species. And so this is what we have here. We have researchers who are in charge to monitor these animals, make sure they're healthy. As like I said at the beginning of this episode, they thought that this uh, this round uh, the Charlotte the stingray was 
uh, developed, she developed cancer. That's what they thought, but it wasn't the case, which was great. And it's something that you know, we all get to learn about parthenogenesis. So it's a great opportunity to educate uh, the people, the public about around in North Carolina as well as international because it made international headlines. And now we're finding out what's really happening and what these animals are capable of when it comes into a situation where there aren't mates around. They have the ability to essentially clone themselves. In this case, they clone themselves four times, giving them four times the chance of actually passing on these genes to mix with other genes uh, to make sure that their genetic diversity is you know, in good shape and in good form. So that's the episode. That's really what it comes down to. I thought it was really interesting to share. Like I said before, it's made huge headlines or, or, or internationally. Uh, and Charlotte's got her day in the press, so her 15 minutes of fame, which I think it's great. Did you know that Stingrays did this? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, just hit me up on Instagram at How to Protect the Ocean. I would love to hear your thoughts. And of course, you can always contact me through speakupforblue.com forward slash contact. At speakupforblue.com forward slash contact. Fill out the form. It goes right to my email uh, and I'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you want more information to your inbox, you can do so by going to speakupforblue.com forward slash newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter and you will be able to get a newsletter five days a week for the most part. Uh, not only on news, but job advertisements and you get all the updates on how we uh, you know, update our podcast and our YouTube channel. So check that out, speakupforblue.com forward slash newsletter. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for uh, having the patience to handle my voice. I hope it's not too, too bad right now. It might be bad later on as I batch record these. But regardless, thank you so much for holding on and having that patience and being a listener. I really do appreciate it. If you know someone who wants to listen to this, just share this podcast with them, whether it's this episode or another episode. Um, that it's always great to, that's how we grow, uh, grow our audience into this wonderful community that we have now. So thank you so much for listening to this episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time and happy conservation.